Fairness Creatives presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, my dear friends. I hope and trust I find you well. We have one more experience for this week as we come to an end, and I want us to consider, as promised, verse fourteen of Genesis chapter twenty-two. It reads as follows: And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah. Yere or Jehovah Jire, as it is said to this day, and the mount of the Lord it shall be seen, and the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Amen. Let us take time to call upon the Lord of the mountains. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of considering your word. Dear Lord, we draw experiences. From your word, and we know wherever we have been, we too can name those places where we have met with you, dear Lord. Teach us to remember those places, to identify them, and place milestones on them, so that our faith may be increased and encouraged along the way. This has been our prayer of faith. Show us more on your mountain this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask. Amen. It has been a long and arduous week, I'm sure. But now, as we come to the end, what are the five points I wish for you to take away as you reflect on how、uh, Abraham comes to an end on the mountain top experience? And this is on Mount Moriah. At point number one, what are the things that Abraham saw? He did see two things, and three of them he didn't see them. Listen on and learn more about some of these things. At point number one, Abraham saw the plan of salvation played out before him in a miniature scale. The ram took the place of Isaac, and this was the plan of salvation. The plan of salvation hinges on a sacrifice. Christ is going to be sacrificed. Abraham knows that. Christ is going to take the place of his posterity. Abraham now knows this, and where does he see this? At the mountain top. When he has seen it, guess what? He now names the place Jehovah Yireh. God will provide. God does always provide, my friends. As you go into the week, into the weekend, I mean, take time to look out for God's provisions. For you are always at the mountain top when you are with the Lord. At point number two. Abraham did not just see these things at the mountain top. The angel of the Lord called again to him and rehashed the blessing that was promised. I think it is in、um, chapters eighteen, fifteen, and twelve. You are going to have children that would be as many as the sands of the sea. Not only are you going to have these families, are going to be blessed because of you and through your posterity. Who is this posterity inclusive of? It is inclusive of the promised Messiah. Families will be blessed because of Jesus Christ, and those families include my family and your family. They include me and you. We are blessable, and Abraham received this assurance from the angel of the Lord, and we shall dwell more on the angel of the Lord next week as we get to the mountain of God. And may I just stress something? That is unique about the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord is God Himself. Let me draw you to a hint. He says, "I swear by myself." Gabriel, Gabriel does not swear by himself. All other angels do not swear by themselves. Only God can swear by Himself. The angel of the Lord is the archangel Michael, Jesus Christ, before the incarnation. He gives that assurance, and he says, "Guess what? Your posterity shall be blessed. Not only shall it be blessed, because of it, other people shall be blessed." Point number three: This Abraham did not see. Abraham had no clue. Points number three, four, and five. When God blesses us, He blesses us prospectively, from here and onwards. From here into forever, Abraham never knew that on Mount Moriah, pretty soon only, only as God plans and fulfills, 
there shall be a city of Jerusalem and in the mountain it shall be seen a city was to be established right where he walked. A city was going to be established and God says in the mountain it shall be seen. How often when God blesses us, we lose sight of that he is capable to do more than we can ever imagine. More that can even enter our minds. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, and neither has it entered the minds of man what the Lord has prepared. For we are quick to think if we have seen the mountains, the trees, and the rocks, that's all. But God says a city can come out of this place. That is my God. That is your God. He can bless you beyond measure. When he blesses you from one experience, it has a ripple effect. There is a domino effect. At point number four, notice this. Not only was there to be built a mountain, I'm in a city where he had gone to worship, but the temple of Solomon, read 1 Kings chapter 6, was actually built on Mount Moriah. He went for three days to worship. He went for three days to sacrifice his son. Little did he know, his posterity was going to erect a temple of gold worth about 13 billion United States dollars nowadays. More than that, actually. That is how much that temple was worth. Lots of millions. That's how much it was worth. The gold in there was priceless. And Abraham says, in the mountain of the Lord, it shall be seen. The temple was a wonder that drew many from all over to come and see the splendor, the opulence of the temple of Solomon. Even the Ethiopian queen went out to see the temple of Solomon. All these shall be seen at the mountain of the Lord. And at point number five, to just wrap it off, here is what that was going to happen. Everything culminated at the mountain of the Lord. Christ was to give his life and Christ was to be the bent offering of all bent offerings for everything spoke of a Christ to come. Abraham looked forward to Christ. We look back to what Christ has done. Everything comes together in Christ. He holds God and he holds humanity. And doesn't the good book say, in Christ, God the Father reconciled the world unto himself. Where was this experience? Where was this observed? At the mountaintop. May I then say unto you, as we come to a conclusion on Mount Moriah, remember this, the plan of salvation always is in place and it takes place even as we go through the little errands of our lives of worshiping God. There is an assurance. God will not only bless us, but he will bless our children, bless the generations that follow and bless us even beyond that which we can see and or imagine. Should we lose anything as we go into this weekend, remember from Mount Moriah, the ram is within reach and he is Christ. The ram is up for taking and he is Christ. Claim him and you will have a mountaintop experience. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord favor you. May the good Lord appear to you over this weekend. Blessings and peace.